This is Shred, and today we're going to look at how to make music with modes. Now, modes are one of the most confusing and misunderstood topics in the universe. Now, fortunately, you clicked on this video, which means you'll be one of the few to receive my sacred modal enlightenment. <laughs> Now, in this video, you'll learn scale shapes for each of the seven modes in the key of E, but more importantly, you'll learn the primary chords for each mode. I've also written a short musical cue to demonstrate the core sound and unique personality of each mode. But we're not done. As a bonus, Jake from Signals Music Studio has graciously agreed to stop by and share some modal licks with us as well. Now you can get the tabs and backing tracks for this video by signing your soul away to me on my Patreon page below. So grab your axe and let's get to it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, first up, what the hell is a mode? And the answer is, it's just a scale. That's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time. <laughs> so the clearest way I can demonstrate modes is this. From C to C is a C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's all the white notes. Now, a mode is when you still play all the white notes, but you start in a different spot and you end in a different spot. So the D Dorian mode is D to D instead of C to C. So now you have the notes D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And that's the idea. So moving on, Phrygian would be the third mode of the C major scale. So instead of starting on C and ending on C, we're gonna start on E and end on E, but still playing all of the white notes. F Lydian, F to F, G Mixolydian, G to G, A Aeolian, A to A, and B Hlokrian, B to B. That was a nice chord. What chord was it? <laughs> now, I want to demonstrate why it's so important to understand chords when it comes to modes. So let's take the Pink Floyd song, Great Gig in the Sky, which is in the G Dorian mode. And to start, I'm going to use the G Dorian scale to improvise over it. All right, so that's more or less the original tone and vibe of the song. Now, what happens, though, if instead of playing G Dorian, now I play A Phrygian? Now you can probably hear that there's not any difference. There's still a G minor and C chord progression happening in the backing track and the tone is of the song is still there. Now I'm going to change the chords in the backing track. Instead of playing G minor and C, I'm going to make it A minor and B flat. Now, how did that sound? You should be able to tell that that's a completely different sonic landscape. It has that brooding, haunting quality that Phrygian has, and really there's no Dorian elements at all, even though I was playing the Dorian scale over the Phrygian chords. So all that to say, it's very important to understand chords when it comes to modes, because they have more control over the sound. <laughs> Now what I want to do next is examine each of the modes in more detail. Ionian is the first mode, and it's just the same thing as the major scale. The sonic quality here is 
optimistic, happy, uplifting, standard major. Now the primary chords for the E major scale can be represented by the formula one, four, and five. All that means is E, A, and B. And as you'll notice with all the chord voicings I play in this video, I'm always going to use the tonic note as a pedal tone, which just means I repeat that note with all of the chord voicings. The reason I do that is because this really solidifies that tonic pitch as the foundation for the sound. It's really more of an ear training thing than anything else. Now let's hear the sound of the Ionian mode in a musical context. Now one of the secrets to improvising in modes, or just improvising in general, is to reference the chords that you're soloing over. So if you're soloing over an A chord, you might be thinking to yourself, I'm going to play a C sharp note because that's in an A chord, or an E, which is the fifth of the A chord, or of course the root, A. Prodigies exist. Musicians, you have stolen my dreams and my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to Dorian. Dorian is the second mode of the major scale. And it's a minor mode, but it's kind of in between minor and major because of the raised sixth degree. This adds a little bit of a major component. Here's the F sharp Dorian scale. <laughs> To me, Dorian is very representative of the Pink Floyd sound and David Gilmour's spacious atmospheric solos. The chord in Shine On You Crazy Diamond, that's really a perfect harmonic snapshot of the Dorian sound because it contains all the critical elements. You got the root, the minor third, the raised six, which gives the twinge of, twinge of major, and it also has the minor seventh in there, which is very important. Now the chords for the Dorian mode can be represented by the formula minor one to major four. Or in this case, that's going to be F sharp minor and B over F sharp. Now let's hear the sound of Dorian in a musical context. Phrygian is the third mode of the major scale. This one's very popular in metal due to that flat second degree. Check out the Phrygian scale. And the chords for Phrygian, you've got G sharp minor, and then A over G sharp. Very haunting and dark quality here. I love it. Let's hear Phrygian in action in a more musical setting now.
Now, Lydian is the fourth mode of the major scale. This scale is major, but it has a sharp fourth scale degree, which gives it a little bit of tension. And that sort of translates for me into a more epic, uplifting quality than regular major. It's also responsible for making us cry at the movies. <laughs> Thanks, John Williams. So the chords for the Lydian mode are major one and major two, or in this case, A and B. Now, as I said, Jake from Signal's Music Studio is going to drop by and blow up a few Lydian licks for us. Take it away, Jake. This solo is composed using only the diatonic notes of A Lydian or E major. It consists of a very, very simple melodic phrase that is repeated several times throughout, and then those little phrases are bridged together through moments of shred. Pretty bitchin' solo, right? My two favorite things are the odd note groupings and the thematic continuity between phrases. Now, Jake is one of the most articulate and clear music educators on YouTube. So get on over to his channel, subscribe, and level up your guitar and music theory game. <laughs> now, I just want to re-emphasize here the importance of pedal tones, that repeating bass note. If you don't use these, your ear is really not going to form a connection between the tonic and the sound of the mode. So do this for the sake of your ears. Do it for your ears, bro. Now I want to show you guys a little bit of my process when it comes to recording here. So we're in my Logic profile. And I'll just kind of walk you through a little bit uh, for the drums. Also keep in mind, I'm no pro at this, but I'll just show you the way I do it. So for the drums, I'm using Easy Drummer 2. Uh, this is the modern setting. Moving on to the bass, uh, I'm using a number of different sounds for the bass. You got a bazooki. Uh, also have a grand piano. Hitting some really low notes. Uh, what else? You've got, I've got an orchestral patch here. And this is the Vienna Symphonic Library, their smart orchestra uh, that I'm using for the plugin. And the last thing I'm using is an upright bass, and this is courtesy of the BBC Symphony Orchestra. Now for the chords, uh, I'm using a synth pad, and I'm also doubling that sound with an orchestral patch here, uh, just to round out the tone and give it more variation. For the guitars, I'm keeping things real simple here, just two guitar tracks that are panned uh, hard right and left in the stereo field to make it sound wider. Um, and for an EQ, uh, I'm just taking out some of the lows and mids, boosting the highs a little bit. Nothing crazy here. Mixolydian is the fifth mode of the major scale. And here we have another major scale, but it has a flat seventh degree, 
And this translates into a more whimsical, playful sort of party sound. Extremely popular in classic rock. In fact, it's hard to think of classic rock songs that aren't in the Mixolydian mode. Now the chords for the B Mixolydian mode are B and A, and this can be represented by the formula major one to flat major seven. Let's hear the sound of Mixolydian in a musical context. bacon for breakfast. Mmm. <laughs> now moving on to Aeolian. Here we're at the sixth mode of the major scale. Aeolian is a minor scale and it's characterized by the flat sixth degree. Very moody and uh, sad, traditional minor quality. Very popular in metal. And there's sort of two ways you can take the chords. You, cannot, you can either do uh, C sharp minor to A to B, or another route you can take through Aeolian is C sharp minor to F sharp minor, or the four, and then to uh, G sharp minor, back to C sharp minor. They both sound great. And let's check out my Aeolian cue. Mega Death, Mega Life, Megalodon. <laughs> now, I also want to talk about uh, some mastering tools that I use here. I use something called the Multipressor, and this is a, a multi band uh, EQ compression uh, tool that you can use. And it also makes things louder and makes uh make sure your recordings pop a little bit more I'm using an adaptive limiter here setting the output ceiling to negative 0.1 so there's no clipping possible again this is going to boost your signal make things louder i'm also using the stereo spread tool uh to give the mix a bit of a wider sound. As I said, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to recording. I just kind of experiment and find sounds that I like. I'd encourage you to do the same. Of course, you know, get educated on this stuff, watch videos, but also just kind of like follow your ears and explore. Now, finally, we've come to Locrian, or as Rick Graham would say, Locrian. <laughs> This is easily the darkest, most dissonant sounding mode of all. It's the, also the least popular. There's very, very few songs that could actually be considered Locrian. And the reason is because you have that minor second scale degree and also the flat five, which just creates a lot of tension. And another reason why Locrian's hard to use is because the one chord, which is a minor seven flat five chord, is really the only chord. 
So there's no actual harmonic movement in the mode. Now, what I do to kind of cheat my way through this and create the illusion of harmonic movement is to use different inversions of the minor seven flat five chord. Like you could use F sharp minor six, or you could use D sharp minor over A, which to my ear, this kind of creates like a oddly Lydian effect. And then you could also do this one, D sharp minor over C sharp, which who knows what the fuck that is. But anyway, by using these chord voicings, you create the illusion that you're actually going somewhere, but you're really not. Now, as you guys know, I actually have a bit of a penchant for dissonance. My ears always sort of just bend that way. So get ready for your ears to bleed and let's check out my Hulkrian cue. <laughs> that was evil AF, right? Now, the key takeaway in this video is to understand that there's two components to modes, not just the scale aspect, which we're all familiar with, but there's also the chordal component. And the chordal part is actually more important when it comes to conveying the sound of a mode than the scales, as I demonstrated earlier. So what you might try doing is head on over to Patreon, grab these backing tracks, and start improvising over them. But when you're improvising, really pay attention to the harmonic movement that's inherent within each mode. And try to find your own personality and style within those parameters. And if you can do that, you win. <laughs> Until next time, shred till you're dead. <laughs>
the secret to making it sound musical is twofold. First, use pedal tones to provide tonal context. A pedal tone is a drone or repeated pitch, usually in the bass register. It also helps to understand the tendency tones or sensitive pitches in the scale. For example, in the Persian scale, the root, flat second, major third, and major seventh are the important notes to emphasize. Here's a short musical example. Death Metal Cat approves. <laughs> you can score the backing tracks I made for each scale at my Patreon page below. I'll see you at the crossroads at midnight. Bring your soul and don't be late. Next in our exotic scale journey, we're headed to the Far East to check out the Komoe scale. A pentatonic scale with Japanese origins, the Komoe scale contains five notes. The notes are A, B, C, E, and F. By the way, F stands for... You can use this sequence of intervals to construct the scale starting on any note. The first, second, flat third, fifth, and flat six scale degrees. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. Now something that I think is cool AF is to turn a scale into a chord. By combining the notes in the Komoe scale, we can get some very exotic sounds happening. Let's hear some licks that outline this delicious sounding scale. For some reason, sushi sounds amazing right now. The evil tritone scale is next. I'm not sure about the origins of this scale, but I've heard it referred to as the Indian hexatonic scale as well. Highly erotic. The notes in the key of A are A, B flat, C sharp, D sharp, E, and G. The intervallic structure is 1, flat 2, 3, sharp 4, 5, and finishes with a minor 7th. The reason it's called the tritone scale is because of the two major chords a tritone apart within the scale. This sound always makes me think of the Russian composer Igor Stravinsky and his Petruchka chords, which are C and F sharp. Love you, Igor. Getting back to the tritone scale, you can see that an A major chord is in this scale, containing the notes A. C sharp and E. There's also an E flat major chord, which is spelled E flat, G, and B flat. The D sharp is enharmonically equivalent to E flat, which just means that it's the same note stated in two different ways. Sometimes I don't know what Shred's talking about.
Buckle up, because it's time to travel to the lands of the Middle East for the last time. The Arabic scale is an excellent choice if you're trying to capture the essence of that exotic scale sound. Now this scale is actually known by two other names, the Byzantine scale and the double harmonic major scale. This makes things really fun confusing. The main thing is that you know they all share the same notes. Those notes are A, B flat, C sharp, D, E, F, and G sharp. Thinking in terms of intervals, you have the 1, flat 2, 3, 4, 5, flat 6, and the major 7th. Let's have a listen to my unforgettable guitar playing to hear this scale in action. Death Metal Cat approves. As it turns out, Death Metal Cat approves of all these scales. Now let's be honest, the world is highly oversaturated with guitar players. Hell, even if you're an amazing player, it's hard to get people to stop scrolling and actually turn up their volume to watch your video while taking a shit. Mastering these exotic scales will help draw more attention to your original music and develop a unique phrasing in your delivery. Or you can just keep repping the pentatonic scale but something tells me Death Metal Cat does not approve. Just know that I appreciate each and every one of you, especially those who have sold your souls to me on Patreon. Tabs and backing tracks are below, and until next time, stay evil. <laughs>
yeah, dominate me, Phrygian. The flat second and major third degrees in this scale are really the star of the show. This produces a major tonality, but with a dark, spicy vibe. Bottoms up. Oh, delicious. <coughs> now, typically, Phrygian dominant lessons don't go beyond the scale itself. With this limited knowledge, all you're likely to do is get into trouble repping the Phrygian dominant mode where it doesn't belong. The real secret to using this mode, as with any mode, is to understand the harmonic implications. Here's what I mean. Modes aren't just scales, they're also chord progressions. The Phrygian dominant mode uses the chord formula 1 to flat major 2, or in the case of E Phrygian dominant, E and F chords. A quick word of advice though, always voice these chords with the tonic pedal in the bass. This helps you absorb the sound quicker by providing a contextual reference to the root. And really, this is how composers and film score writers think. Don't you want to be cool like them? <laughs> The final piece to the puzzle is to incorporate this knowledge into your riffs and licks. By outlining E and F chords and referencing the tendency tones, which are the flat 2 and major 3rd, you'll bring to life the character in this dominating mode. Here's an example of Phrygian dominant using finger tapping. Now in this example, I'm consciously thinking of how to outline the primary chords of the mode within the lick. Now the primary chords are E and F, so I'm thinking, okay, how do I play the notes in an E chord, which are E, G sharp, and B, and also the notes in an F chord, which are F, A, and C. Sometimes my students' initial reaction is, you can only play these two chords to sound Phrygian dominant? Aren't there more options? And the answer is no. no. But in the right hands, these limitations yield an unimaginable array of variation and creativity. So basically, it's your own damn fault if it sounds like <laughs> Now here's another Phrygian dominant lick that relies on outlining the specific tendency tones of the mode. The flat 2, major 3rd, 5th, and 6th degrees form the rough structure of the primary chords in order to produce that undeniably delicious Phrygian dominant sound. Now, if you really want to get good at Phrygian dominant or any other mode, the real secret is to record with it. Fire up your DAW or digital audio workstation and record some licks the babes can't resist. Although just remember, it's very easy for babes to resist shred guitar. You've got to feel it and bleed emotion, like Dimebag Daryl, for instance. Until next time, shred till you're dead. <laughs> so you're telling me there's scales other than pentatonic? <laughs> hmm, I wonder if that's true. So I went on a journey to discover other scales. Something to satisfy my evil heart's desires. I searched far and wide. For 66.6 .6 days, I searched. And then I took a break. All this searching makes me tired. Oh yeah, I can use the internet. And then it finally happened. 
I found a scale so evil it made my hardwood feel 69 feet long. I give you the tritone scale. <laughs> Pentatonic scale, blues player, tritone scale. <laughs> the E tritone scale contains the notes E, F, G sharp, A sharp, that's the evil part, B, and D. D stands for damn, the scale is evil. Thinking in terms of intervals, you have the one flat second major third, augmented fourth, perfect fifth, and minor seventh. Maybe I should try other scales. Sure, if it's the tritone scale. <laughs> The ultra wicked tritone scale contains two chords, E major and B flat major. E major is spelled E, G sharp, and B, and B flat major is spelled B flat, D, and F. Of course, F stands for <laughs> Nose pentatonic scale. I am a master of guitar. Not so fast, bro. True masters know the tritone scale. Here's an inversion exercise in using the two chords of the tritone scale, E major and B flat major. And now I'll play the same thing with my beard. Now here's a hybrid picking exercise using the tritone scale. So here I'm using my flipper finger to hybrid pick through the tritone scale with the high E string as a pedal tone. Now this isn't just about giving people the bird, that'd be foul play. <laughs> It's really about using a reference pitch to provide context for the tonality. Now, whatever you do, don't subscribe to my channel and certainly don't go to my Patreon page where you can get hundreds of guitar lessons on technique and music theory. <laughs> Counterpoint is the science of how musical voices move. Here's a short two-voice counterpoint passage using the tritone scale. Deliciously evil. Here's a short piece of music I wrote using the tritone scale. Keep your ears open for evil. Looking for some direction in life, what you gotta do is sell your soul to the dark lord of music. You have to bleed passion and dedication to your craft if you wanna impress the babes and the dudes. With that in mind, you can get the tabs and music for this video at my Patreon page below. I'm talking way below. <laughs> there you can also get my scale bible music theory course one million dollars free cash i mean my modal mayhem course and chord bible everything you need to become a musical monster i get so hungry for souls <sighs> mm -hmm.
Until next time, stay evil. This is Shred, and today we're going to get erotic, I mean exotic, with metal's secret weapon, the Arabic scale. This is the perfect scale if you're looking to emulate that Marty Friedman sound. Tabs and music for this video will be at my Patreon page below. Here's how it works. You give me your soul, no big deal, and I give you erotic, I mean exotic, musical powers. <sighs> you can do this, Shred. My scale bible, chord bible, music theory course, and modal master class await you. Just remember Randy Rhodes is waiting to party with you in hell. <laughs> Now, I want to point out that the Arabic scale is also called the Byzantine scale and the double harmonic major scale. Just know they all mean the same thing. It's the one in Dick Dale's Miserloo. It's helpful to think of the Arabic scale as just being Phrygian dominant with a raised seventh. Let's take a look at the E Arabic scale in one octave. The notes are E, F, G sharp, A, B, C, and D sharp. D stands for damn this scale is evil. Thinking in terms of intervals, we have the one, flat two, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, minor sixth, and major seventh. Ooh, spicy. Ah, man, just licking those things sets my tongue on fire. What do you think of this scale, death metal pig? Well, that hurts my feelings. Here's an open position version of the E Arabic scale. It's extremely important to use pedal tones or drones when learning a new scale. This provides a constant reference to the tonic or root note, which helps you absorb the erotic I mean exotic sounds. Now let's try a 12th position fingering to gain a different perspective on the Arabic scale. How'd I do this time, PIG? I just feel like it's impossible to impress you sometimes. Here's a pedal tone exercise using hybrid picking. The purpose of the pedal tone is to train your ears, not your fingers. What are the sensitive pitches in the scale? Things like the flat two, the major third, and the major seventh. Now let's have a look at some chords you can use to create the Arabic scale sound. E major and E major with a flat nine is a cool way to do it. Sounds very flamenco-esque. R.I.P. Paco de Lucia. Do you like chords, P.I.G.? 
Keep it up, pig, and I'm going to be having bacon for dinner. <laughs> One thing I do when learning a new scale is create short counterpoint phrases. Counterpoint is when you have two or more melodies happening at once. This really helps when you're trying to create riffs or licks with a scale. It's like the fundamental building blocks of a song. I wrote a short piece of music using the Arabic scale. Look out for counterpoint phrases, flat nine chords, and bending notes using sensitive pitches like the flat second and major seventh. Tabs and music for this video are at my Patreon page below. Way below. Just give me that soul and sign your name in blood. Then burn in hell with Randy Rhodes. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what scale you'd like to see me analyze next. Until next time, stay evil. <laughs>